Now your ego has a tendency to tell us what's right and what's wrong, but we don't always know what's right and what's wrong because yes, we have natural awareness, but there's so many perspectives to every situation. For some people, what the right decision might be is the wrong decision for someone else. So it's so important to examine our ego and the different perspectives that we have in front of us. We don't have to just look at something with one, when, with the two eyes that we have. We have spiritual eyes as well, where we can peer into things more seriously and on a level that allows us to truly um, exercise our, our free will to understand things on a higher perspective, okay? The next card is shame. You might be trying to let go of shame. If you feel shame about your situation, whether it's financial, whether it's your love life, whether it's anything of that sort, don't be shamed. There's no reason to be ashamed because shame is a low vibration and it comes from thinking that you are not enough. But I want you to know that you are enough. You are indeed enough and you will always be enough. As long as you continue to work on yourself and as long as you continue to fight for what it is that you want out of your life, you will always be enough. So the second deck here, oops, so my bracelet fell off. Okay, so the second deck that I created here is, um, I call it healing number two, okay? So healing number two, healing number one deals with the issues that um, we individually need to heal within ourselves in order to move forward to our next level. Healing number two here, deals with the steps that, that I advise that we should take in order to move forward in that healing, okay? So it says, be open to resting your security in the unseen. Like I mentioned, there's so many things in the world that we're so unaware of that's already planned, ordained, destined, and, you know, in stone. Um, yes, we always have free will, but there's many things that are already in stone. And when we ignore and try to deflect from those things that literally are in stone, then uh, the more we uh, pull ourselves away from our, our true path, okay? So the next thing it says here, let's see. I gotta be careful with the wind out here. It says the directions taken while people pleasing must always be monitored. Matter of fact, don't be a people pleaser. And you see how it has like the knife in the ground? It reminds me of like Excalibur or something of that sort. When we people please, it's like we are putting a stake in the ground that is stuck in a way. Because people think that once we state the claim of people pleasing and being their, their slave in a way to whatever it is that they want out of us, they think that they have control and that there is no power to pull that knife out of that stone. But you can do it. Anything that's tried to have power over you, I want you to know that you have full capability to pull that uh, knife out of that uh, Excalibur out of that daggone rock and keep it moving, you know? It's like people sometimes will do anything to keep us stuck in a position where we are available to them, stuck in a position where we are susceptible to their, their role. But that's not the life we're supposed to live. We're not supposed to be susceptible to anyone's role except the most high God. Anything else is secondary. And that even comes to your parents. That even comes to your friends. That even comes to your family, you know? You have to learn to put you first and understand that healing is all about putting you first so that you can reposition yourself. Only through healing can you access your ascension, okay? It says create a cleansing routine or ritual. If you don't have a cleansing routine or ritual, now is the time to do it. This looks like an ovary here, which reminds me of the cycles that women go through, you know? It's like, we go through so many cycles a month. It's like we go through each season all within 30 days. And it's so important to cleanse out our energies 
because there's always stagnant lingering energies that can actually hold us back it's so important to start cleansing yourself whether it's going outside for a walk and doing breathing exercises breathing in for what is it four no breathing in for eight no breathing in for four and then releasing for eight seconds and that really helps to bring oxygen to your brain and to allow clarity and, and better thinking Another way that you can cleanse yourself, I sell products at www.goddesscharismacare.net where I sell salt baths, I sell spiritual oils, and I sell a hair oil, um, and I sell candles for cleansing your energy. Sometimes it's about lighting up a candle and you know, meditating over that candle. Sometimes it's about, um, like I said, getting outside and getting more active. But one thing about it is that you must be proactive about cleansing yourself. Once you create a ritual, it's just simply something that you can consistently go to every day or every week that you can, um, you know, do in a timely manner that it shows routine. You know, one thing about spirituality and the way that God works is that when he sees you working and he sees you planning on things and you're actively putting forth the effort, um, he will make a way for you. And that's just, you know, kind of like with anything, you, you must do the work. I think it's definitely time to cleanse your energy, whoever you might be. Let go of that ego. Stop being that people pleaser. Don't let anybody convince you that they're more powerful than you are, or that their word is more important than yours because uh, your words and what you have to say matter too. That's what healing is about. It says free and energize areas of your life that once brought you joy. And that goes back to the beginning, you know? Um, in order to spark your creativity, it's so much important to place yourself in a frequency of joy. You know, the frequency of, of joy and happiness. Uh, whether it's rolling down a hill when you were a kid that brought you joy and happiness, or uh, whether it was eating that ice cream, or, you know, licking to see how many, checking to see how many licks it takes to get to the middle of a Tootsie Pop. You know, silly things like that. They really spark your creativity and it's time to, to get back to that energy and, and I definitely encourage that because it looks like that's what you're needing right now. So this one says, examine and release imaginative realities that keep you stuck mentally. Are there realities that keep you stuck mentally? Whether it's that relationship or that friendship or, you know, that uh, family experience that you had that still echoes in your mind and echoes into your existence it's time to examine and release that uh those those realities that keep you stuck you know every day we're growing every every month we move forward and i think they say that like every so and so amount of days our organs pretty much regenerate so if our organs are regenerating we have to understand that naturally our our energies are doing the same we also have to understand that naturally our minds are doing the same. So just as much as the world is shifting and changing and the energies are changing around us, so is our consciousness and, and so are our experiences. So it's so important to not get stuck. Do not be stuck in those realities. Um, I know at one point I had to release personally the reality of thinking that I wouldn't find the right people in my life to guide me, to help me to assist me, to lead me, and to love me, you know? I had to release the idea that the people who told me that I could never have those things were liars. And that's not the God that we serve. That's not the world that we live in where people can just say those things over you. No one has that power. So the more I realized it, I had to understand that when it comes to ushering genuine and real legit uh, friendships and relationships, that takes work too. But it also takes for you to operate at a certain frequency so that you can receive those people. And when you do the work, then all those things will come in. But it's so important to remain unstoppable in your pursuit. One last one from this deck. It says, release the need to rule with highly fueled emotions that bring stress. So yeah, there's no need to rely on those uh those stress beams without, within you, you know, those stress reactors. Um, sometimes we are passionate about how we express ourselves. And when we're passionate, sometimes 
that passion, it ignites these highly fueled, emo fueled emotions like we speak of here. Not realizing that these highly fueled emotions can bring stress to us. So I ask that you examine your um, emotions and examine those times where you felt unbalanced and uh, try to see within yourself how to bring balance to yourself and not get to a point that it uh, gets you to a stress level. It's like going from zero to 10. Before you go to zero to 100, matter of fact, go to zero to 10 and see how that feels. Examine how it feels to go zero to 10. Then, um, you know, you have to examine yourself when you go zero to 100, zero to 50. Excuse me, yeah, zero to 50 and then zero to 100. You have to start looking at yourself and, and examining how your receptors are, what triggers you. And the more that you evaluate those triggers, the more you can have control over your emotional state. The next deck that I created, I call it the Polar Opposites deck. This deck I made, it deals with like opposites to understand the opposites of situations. This is a bumblebee. I'm not bothering him and he not bothering me, but don't come over here. <laughs> so the first card here for my opposite deck this is wild so I guess it's like this bumblebee right here <laughs> you have to understand what's wild in your life um, and when I spoke about the wild emotions you know at one point I probably would have been screaming and running and swinging hands and punching and who knows what because of that bee but now that I've gotten control of my emotions and I've ascended in, in my natural state and because I, I daily take the actions to better myself, I'm able to be chill. So that's what this, this card means when it says wild and tame. It deals with you having to evaluate in your life what is wild and what needs to be tamed. You know yourself, you know your wild side. When it comes to being balanced, there's an in-between your wild state and your tamed state. <laughs> Sometimes. Yes. At this time. <laughs> so this time it's time to be tamed. 